Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video I am going to be updating my work area. Uh, all this back here, it's time for a change. If you'll remember from my last video, when I built this, uh, I built my prep lab basically as cheaply as I could just to get up and running. I started off with a, this is a Harbor Freight a sandblasting cabinet. They had a end of year sale and a massive coupon that I stacked on top of it. And I got this thing cheaper than I could build a plywood uh, cabinet for. So I bought this and it's worked well for the last couple of years. Um, but it's beginning to get a little bit inconvenient having to go through two different places. Plus it takes up quite a bit of room. And over here at my main prep area... Uh, you can see this is where I do most of my uh, air scribe work. But, you know, as you can see, this throws debris absolutely everywhere. You know, it's all over the floor. It's from one end of the shop to the other. It really makes a giant mess to not have this enclosed also. And having to go from scribe work here to air abrasion here. This is just kind of a pain. So it is time to redo this. What I've got to do, uh, disassemble all of this. My work height is is too high for what, what I'm going to be doing. So I've got to take, take my bench top off and I've got to redo and lower that down probably about a, eight inches to get it where it needs to be. And part of this, I'm going to, since I'll be getting rid of this, I've got to replumb all my uh, air cleaning. And that should at least simplify things. And my air system, that's going to be changing not only the plumbing of it, but I've got a nice little modification that that's in the works. And I'll have a video just on that. So... Watch for that coming up soon. All right. As much as I hate to have downtime, uh, winter's drawing to a close. It's time to get this done so that I can have my final workspace for the season. So now that the demolition is done, now I've got to start figuring out my new heights and start measuring and cutting, <clears throat> excuse me, and figuring out uh, where everything is going to go now. So what I'm starting off doing, sitting on the chair my that I'm going to be using, so I have my lap height so I can measure and figure out the height that my workbench is going to sit at. So then I can uh, start cutting and moving everything down to the proper level.
Alrighty, uh, that's first phase of my remodel is now complete. I wound up lowering the, the workbench height about five inches. Uh, it was really too high. And I wound up also uh, fixing a little minor flaw. The new workbench looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I also got my insulation put up back there. I was putting off getting that installed because with everything that was mounted here, that was going to become a pain in the butt. But the true test here, I can sit. My legs are clear in the, the under bracing and I've got a good work height right here for my blast cabinet to go to. So this is the mock-up that I've made of my blast box that I may I may build. Uh, the reason I'm doing a mock-up is because I have a microscope that is going to be here eventually. And I need to have room on the bench for the microscope base to be mounted. And I have to figure in the focal the focal depth the working depth of the microscope with the size of the box if i built this box you know 13 inches high and i can't see the bottom of it with a microscope then that does me a zero good when it comes to you know working on some thin flat uh, fossils like a lot of my fish plates and things like that or very small fossils. One of the aspects that I'm debating on is whether to uh, build this with a solid base, uh, kind of how I made it here with cardboard, or whether to leave the base open. My thought is that uh, the, the focal range of the microscope is probably going to be fairly limited. Uh, and on top of that, if I have a larger fossil that I need to work on, I won't have room with the tools. Uh, I barely have room with the tools in the box as it is. So if I'm in here and I'm working, I've got enough room for the tool, but there, there's not a lot. I've got a, I've got a few inches of play before I have to start worrying about the angle that I'm working at. So box height or the top of the box is something that I need to keep in consideration and a larger fossil uh, obviously will need a taller box so that's still something I'm working on uh, another feature of this is how I plan on loading and of course cleaning out and stuff so uh, this is kind of my theory that I'm working on right now is I've got it designed with a hinge at the back and so that way if I needed to of course cardboard of course the cardboard doesn't like to play well and but uh, so that way I could open it up like that if I needed to if I didn't need it complete if I didn't need it completely in encased or for setting specimens in there or taking them out whatever i don't know so anyway that's kind of where i'm at right now and until i get my microscope i am not going to be able to make sure that this is going to work as it is but here in the next part of the video you're going to see i have the microscope And there she is, all pretty new. Okay, let's get it set up. <clears throat>
turns out that a eight inch high workbox is just about the perfect height for a boom arm microscope with a uh, 0.5 Barlow lens on it. Uh, that gives you, that's about at the maximum height that this can reach. And I can still focus down just to, all the way down to the bottom of it. And I have about four inches of working height up to the top of whatever I'm working on. And if I, if I actually needed to go any higher than that, I would have to be standing and I would probably have to build a secondary base for the microscope to sit on. The only trouble so far is that at maximum extension, uh, since it's going out to the side, it makes it just a little bit tippy. It just takes very little pressure to get that to want to tip over. So what I'll have to do is uh, I'll get a weight to go down on this side of it over here to give it a little extra support. It won't need much. I'm little piece of uh, lead about three to five pounds ought to be plenty either that or I might look at the base I'll bet I can take these feet off and drill some holes I may be able just to mount it directly to the workbench there but uh, I'll play around with it see what see what I can do but the uh, next step here is to actually build the box. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you want to stay up to date on all my latest videos, be sure and subscribe so that you don't miss the next one.